Welcome to It's Your Ego, Stupid, a show lovingly intended for millions of spiritual, intelligent, and imperfect people like you who may at times be led into ego stupidity, a lesser version of yourself and a lesser version of life. This show will give you a much deeper understanding of what ego is, what it's doing to your life, how it can weaken your human and spiritual wellness, and how you can heal in each of these areas if needed. It's Your Ego, Stupid will heighten your awareness of the intense link between your ego and spirit, your humanity and divinity, and the synergy that can lead to the best version of you and your life. Your host is Dr. Nick Martin, a licensed psychologist who has worked in the clinical, university, school, and private practice settings over the past 40 years, while serving as a therapist, diagnostician, educator, and consultant. Welcome again to It's Your Ego, Stupid, and now your host, Dr. Nick Martin. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Nick Martin, also known by some as Ego Man. Due to my intense focus on ego and how it's impacting our lives, both humanly and spiritually. And I want to thank you for listening to It's Your Ego Stupid on Ohm Times Radio. The title of today's show is Roles People Live, The Dependent Person. During the show, I'll be looking at people whose lower ego power energy is leading them towards living in the role of the dependent person as they go about living their daily lives. A person who has significant difficulty exercising control and influence over what's taking place in their life. A person who has little trust in themselves and often looks to others for guidance. Lots of wanting others to tell them what to do or not to do. Often questioning their own judgment and decision-making abilities. Lots of second-guessing of themselves often wanting others to tell them what to think, say, or do, even though they are more than capable of doing this for themselves, often becoming excellent candidates to be exploited, manipulated, or abused within relationships. There are plenty of people who live in this role because there is no shortage of domineering or overly protective parents and the supply of the lower ego power energy that serves to drive people who are living in this role that is rooted in the way they were brought up. Many of them having learned not to trust themselves in taking ownership of their life as they work toward becoming adults in the fullest sense of the word. Today I'm going to take you into the dependent person's mind by sharing with you what ego is leading them towards thinking or not thinking, feeling or not feeling, and doing or not doing, and exactly what's happening when a person is living in this role, all in the name of their survival, which is ego's ultimate and only purpose in our life, to be our survival energy, both daily and mortal. During the show, I'll be focusing on two main areas, ego's voice and spirit's voice. When I talk about ego's voice, I'm talking about the mixture of one's ego energy and one's mind. In the case of today's program, the mixture of the dependent person's lower ego power energy and their mind. The place where their thoughts, beliefs, attitudes and values are formed, a place that can be called the ego mind or ego space, as I refer to it in my work, and lays the foundation for the dependent and submissive ways of being within relationships. It's their lower ego power energy that's impacting the thoughts, feelings, and behaviors that the dependent person forms and uses in their daily life, which becomes their ego voice. Ego doesn't form the thoughts the dependent person is using because it can't think and it has no awareness of itself or the energy that it is or the person whose mind it is infiltrating. The person who lives in the role of the dependent person forms the thoughts while building on the ego energy at work in their mind. Ego just provides the fuel, the energy. 
When ego is impacting what's going on in the dependent person's mind, they are listening to and speaking with ego's voice, not their own, but they often don't know it. Ego is in the foreground of their life, and they are in the background. Now, ego should be in the background of our life and only present when needed if our survival is truly being threatened. And that's why tuning into our ego energy is one of the three contributors to ego medicine. We and the dependent person need to know whose voice we are truly listening to and speaking with in our thoughts, words, and deeds as we go about living our daily lives. Is it ego's voice or is it our voice? We want to believe that it's ours, but don't kid yourself, which is something that's easily done by many. We all need to get the real, truthful, honest, and potentially painful answer to that question. Is it ego's voice or mine? A question that most people fail to get the answer to because they don't know how to go about getting it. And that's what my work is about. Helping you to get the answer and doing something about it if necessary. In a way, finding out if you're living in a role that you didn't realize you were living in, just as the dependent person is. Which is happening for many when they're, whether they're a dependent person or an authoritarian or a victim or any of the roles I talk about in my programs on Roles People Live and in my book, The Two Voices Within. Another way of putting it, the dependent person often doesn't know they're being a dependent person. The authoritarian often doesn't know they're being an authoritarian. And the victim often doesn't know they're being a victim because they're unaware of the ego energy operating in their mind and their life and living on a 24-7 basis. But they need to find out that answer so they can be speaking with their voice in their life and not egos. Or they'll just spend their life surviving and never truly and fully living. After I get done talking about ego's voice and the dependent person's need to hear more from it during the second segment of our program, I'm going to be sharing in the third segment what the dependent person is unable to hear from spirit due to being kept at a distance from e spirit's voice by the ego energy at work and the distancing effect that it has on hearing the voice of spirit. Even though the dependent person has a spiritual core, something that we all have, due to having the love, life, and energy God is within them, they are not spiritually well, because they can't be spiritually well in their life due to what their ego energy is doing in it and to it. Their unhealthy, lower ego power energy is not allowing them to hear about and be the love, Life and energy God is within their thoughts, words, and deeds, particularly within their ability to trust and believe in their ability to guide and take ownership of their life. It's not allowing them to fully realize the divine gifts of their life, being able to create their life, their eternal life, and the presence of God within them. Sadly, Spirit's voice is something they, they may never hear and come to know unless they heal their ego energy. Sadly, the ego energy of the dependent person is getting in the way of connecting to their divinity, of being their divinity in their daily life. Sadly, this is something that happens to many people in their life, whatever role they're living in. Many people die living in the role they had been living for 30, 40, or 50 years of their life, never coming to know divine truth and the divine gifts that they have received. They never get better. Many dependent persons never get better. They die never having really lived and experienced healthy, interdependent relationships while guiding and owning their life. 
They spend all their time surviving within their dependent person thoughts, beliefs, values, and attitudes that have often made them overly submissive and at risk to be exploited, manipulated, and abused within relationships. With those sobering thoughts, I'll get started looking deeply into the dependent person by first giving you a brief description of the role of the dependent person. A person you may or may not be acquainted with in your personal life, but is out there in society, if not in your home, so that we can be on the same page as to the role and the kind of person I'm talking about. The dependent person has difficulty exercising control or influence, as or I say, say, power within their life. They have difficulty with making large and small decisions. The large decisions can involve relationships or uh, educational choices or work choices or other significant choices that may occur in anyone's life. They have difficulty with those, but they also have making, difficulty making even smaller ones, like perhaps what movie to go see or what uh, food to choose to eat or things that are clothes to wear. Just looking at to others to guide them and tell them what they should or should not be doing. And in fact, difficulty with the smaller ones, I think, is particularly revealing. It just shows you how desperate they are to have somebody else tell them what they should or should not do. And oftentimes they can be double checking with others to make sure they're doing the right thing. A lot of this, you know, looking to others to just uh, reinforce that maybe they have made the right choice or not made the wrong choice. And a lot of times they often seek permission or perhaps getting the okay to go forward with their choice. That it, it, in a way, it's not enough for themselves to give themselves the okay. They need others to tell them what to do, particularly people who they may be close to in relationships. They have little, if any, trust in themselves and often look to others for guidance. See, the the dependent person has learned to distrust themselves. Uh, earlier, I think I mentioned uh, domineering or overly protective parents. And usually this is the place where people have learned quite well due to childhood lasting, you know, 15 years or more that they shouldn't trust themselves. And so they often got heavy doses over time of let me decide for you. Let me make your choices. You need me to decide for you. And that becomes a a, a pretty dominant quality or characteristic within the mind of the uh, the dependent person that that they are that they become dis disempowered and that they've been taught to distrust themselves as I said by domineering or overly protective parents and they've learned the lesson that it's not okay to make mistakes which gets exaggerated. Uh, the domineering or overly protective parent often subtly or directly communicates how uh, that it's not okay to do the, make a mistake, to fail, to do the wrong thing, and that I can do, my that is the parent, a better job of making sure that doesn't happen than you can. And that's what becomes part of what's uh, ingrained in the relationship that becomes taken on the road and the dependent person begins to have those kind of relationships with other people where they are in the dependent, submissive uh, role or position within the relationship. And this is the kind of thing that can happen with parents who have higher ego power, uh, who need to control or lower ego flexibility, who need to make sure that what they believe is true and what they think is what the young person acquires and lives out in their way of being, or people with higher ego flexibility, uh, parents that is, who have lots of insecurities and may feel uh, affirmed uh, by the fact that they can exercise influence over their, their children in, in ways that sometimes can be quite excessive. The dependent person questions their own judgment and decision-making, then they often want others to tell them what to say or to think or to do or feel. Um, 
in a way that the dependent person has done a good job of dumbing themselves down. Dumbing themselves down, meaning making themselves out to be less capable than they actually are. Uh, in many ways, that's the subtle message that comes through from dominating or controlling parents, uh, overly protective parents, that you're not capable of thinking for yourself consistently and effectively. Effectively, So let me do that. So in a way, the dependent person is often repeating the dumbing down of others from the past. And the, sometimes the dependent person often realizes they are fairly smart, but their ego voice wins out. So they know themselves to be a reasonably intelligent. They can know themselves to be that. But even with that, that distrust of themselves is highly ingrained and they allow themselves to follow others rather than to follow themselves. So they listen to and speak more with their ego voice than with their own voice. The dependent person is an excellent candidate for exploitation manipulation or abuse. Uh, they're at risk, and this is one of the more, really important, I think, parts of our uh, focus today is to help understand how people can be caught up in, become exposed to abuse and exploitation and manipulation. Um, they are at risk to become involved with people who fill the void created by their lower ego power disempowerment issues. Uh, people with higher ego power who like to control people who want to be controlled or people with lower ego flexibility who like to think for people who want to be thought for, which is often the case for the lower ego, uh, the dependent person or people with higher ego vulnerability who want to create distance from their own insecurity by dominating others willing to be dominated. That is the dependent person. Now, people can often readily come to take over uh, their life as they give power away easily. The dependent person does that, and they may not even realize they have the right and the power to, to control or own and direct their lives to begin with. Uh, this sounds quite unusual and abnormal and is filled with ego stupidity, but we do have the right to run our life, to own our life, to control our life. But that's not the kind of thinking that's going on inside the dependent person. Um, the right to control their own life can be a difficult idea to wrap their head around. It's as if a long, insidious process of disempowerment has been playing out, similar to a way like brainwashing. And when people encourage them to run their life, it comes as a surprise for them to do so. And they often don't because it takes them out of their comfort zone, the comfort zone of consistency, familiarity, predictability that ego energy seems to thrive on. And they don't believe that they are entitled to any power, control, or influence over their life. This is what the person who's living in the dependent role finds themselves in. And one more thing I'll mention before we go our, to our first break: they're excellent except at accepting blame for things that they were not that were not truly of their own making. The dependent person rarely takes in failure message or blame that further disempower them and teach them that they that having control is a bad idea. You shouldn't have it, and it's easy for them to blame themselves when things go wrong. Um, they have a difficult time considering the impact of others and contextual influences that are often at work, but they just don't see them. I hope this provides you with some greater familiarity with people who are living in the role of the dependent person and that you can use as a frame of reference as we go further in today's show. We're coming up on our first break when we return I'll be looking at what the person living in the role of the dependent person needs to hear and recognize from the voice of ego that's shaping the way they think, feel, and behave. This is Dr. Nick. You're listening to It's Your Ego Stupid on Own Times Radio, and I'll see you after the break. Conscious Media for Conscious Minds. Own Times. 
Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. OM Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single OM Times endeavor. Host your show with OM Times Radio Network. My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on OM Times Radio, and we'll explore these topics and so much more on Destination Unlimited. Hi, Dr. Nick Martin here. I want to invite you to visit my website, egoandspirit.info, where you can find lots of information on ego and download your free ebook copy of It's Your Ego Stupid. Fix it to fix your life. Also, please visit the shop page where you can find each of my other books, Ego Therapy, Ego Spiritualism, and The Two Voices Within. 19 brought to you by CDC and the Ad Council. If you're feeling increasingly lonely right now, you're not alone. It's totally normal. Even though we may not be able to get together in person, connecting virtually with friends and family still gives you a chance to interact with people and may help raise your spirits. Join a virtual book club, set up group text chats, or online video coffee breaks with coworkers. Find more self care and coping tips at coping 19.org. Welcome back. You're listening to It's Your Ego Stupid on Om Times Radio, a show for intelligent, spiritual, and imperfect people, just like you and me. Now we're going to take a look at the voice of ego operating in the mind of the dependent person. These are the kinds of thoughts rooted in lower ego power energy the dependent person is using to survive in their life and serve as the foundation for the thinking feeling and behaving they make use of as they go about their daily life. These are the kinds of thoughts they must come to hear, recognize, and change if they are ever to become a better person, a whole person, and someone who can be their humanity and divinity. Ego's voice says, I am the source of your dependency. You are to live in retreat within your thoughts, words, and deeds, failing to call upon them in your dealings with people and life. You must remain out of the way of others and avoid risking their scorn or rejection. Dependency is your oxygen, and you must have it. Here the dependent person is teaching themselves with the help of their lower ego power energy that being dependent on or submissive to others is a good thing and will keep them safest. That the dependent person is to ignore their own thoughts and choices in the way they go about handling things. Let others decide. Let others choose for you. Don't do that for yourself, is what the dependent person with the assistance of that lower ego power energy is teaching themselves. And even to do so when they think uh, there are better ideas or choices or that, they, that, dependent, that the dependent person might have, go with theirs. Lean on them more so than leaning on yourself. And there, it's learning that it's more important to avoid the displeasure of others than to follow your lead. Even if uh, it, that means to avoid other people looking at you in some negative light, angry light, whatever, better to just let them lead things. Even if perhaps you have a better idea or a choice and this is part of the nature of that energy where the egoic voice is overwhelming or overriding 
the person's own voice, the dependent person's own voice, where they may see a different option or a different choice as being more likely to be effective or better, but they back off and they allow the uh, other person uh, or persons that they become dependent upon to guide things, to handle things. That dependency is the means to survival. This is the lesson uh, that the uh, that's going on in the mind of the uh, dependent person is that this is the means by which to survive best. Ego's voice says your daily passivity and submissiveness keeps you safe and ensures your survival. You have learned to let others lead as you follow because others know better than you. You must know only blind acceptance and resignation, allowing you to reside in the wisdom of others. Living your life with the thoughts, words, and deeds of others will keep you safe and protected. Here the dependent person is teaching themselves with the help of their lower ego power energy that it's best to live in retreat or to live in the background. And perhaps you've seen many people who kind of do that. They hold back. They live in retreat. But it's not just isolated. It's, it's a very consistent pattern of just allowing themselves to be influenced heavily by what others are thinking. And that to not speak up and to do things the way others would have them do them, the way they think they should be done. That the dependent person is to follow and not question even when they think others are wrong. This is a, a, an indication of this dependency that the person allows the control, the influence of others, even when they perhaps know they are not right. They, they're wrong, but I'm going to go along with it. I'm going to do it the same way as they would have me do it, rather than to exercise my own power. But see, they don't have the sense of power in their lives. They don't feel empowered. So as a result of the disempowerment of lower ego power energy, they go in the direction of doing things that others would have them do, uh, that they may obviously know due to their intellect to be the wrong thing to do. And that's the ego stupidity. That's the abnormal normal. That's the, the prism through which the dependent person is living their life, being influenced by the presence of lower ego power energy that's shaping the outcome. The, the what ends up happening part of it, life for them. Even when they know it's the wrong thing to do, they do it. In a way to keep their eyes closed to what they see as being wrong. Uh, to always remember the goal of being safe and protected by the guidance of others. Uh, and I'm thinking about one word that comes up to me is conformity. Uh, people with lower ego power and the dependent person often conform and they go along and they do things that others would have them do, even when they know they're wrong, but they do them, because that's the nature of the dependent person's role. Ego's voice says, you need not wrestle with conflict or change or adversity. Let others be your guide. Your spouse or partner or loved ones know better than you do. Others can better manage your life than you can. You can survive best in their shadow, in the safety of your dependency. Here the dependent person is teaching themselves with the aid of their lower ego power energy to avoid the thinking and the questioning that's often involved in dealing with conflict or with dealing with change or with adversity. Don't get caught up in doing any of that. Uh, that's not for you to do. It is for us to do, but that's not where the place where the disempowered person is, and particularly those in the dependent person uh, role, don't believe that that's their right 
They don't give themselves permission to think and to question the kinds of things we all cross paths with in our life, things like conflict or change or adversity. And that if there is to be any thinking or questioning or deciding involved in these areas, then let others do it. Again, lean on others, submit to others, even allow for their control or manipulation over us if, uh, in order for this to take place. That the dependent person is to trust more in others than they are in themselves. Uh, I think I mentioned this earlier, this notion of trust and maybe mistrust that the um, dependent person has learned through the indoctrination or training or programming often taking place in a younger, their, earlier in their life, that to trust themselves is a bad idea. And that's a form of ego stupidity. That is, to, when I trust myself, things go wrong, or I shouldn't trust myself. A non-reality-based, uh, non-truthful way of looking at things, uh, but that's the place that the lower ego power person the dependent person living in the role begins to take things as trusting myself is a bad idea and that being dependent and submissive to others is the means to ensuring their protection or survival. Ego's voice says you must know yourself as undeserving and unworthy of any of the earthly gifts that may come your way. Disown all of your wants and needs in favor of those of others, which are more important and which you must know in this light. You must also love others more than yourself. The more you love others and the less you love yourself, the better. This keeps you safest, giving you their protection. This is where you can survive well. Here the dependent person is teaching themselves with the assistance of their lower ego power energy that they should treat themselves secondarily or less worthy and less equal. That the dependent person is to give up their wants and needs because these can lead to wanting to have more control and influence over what is taking place in their life. So they often abandon a healthy sense of uh, experiencing and getting needs met or uh, wants, uh, allowing themselves to experience healthy wants that people often have in life because uh, this allows them to live in a less as a second-class citizen in some respects in any relationship because they're a dependent person who needs to lean on others. That loving others more than yourself will also weaken the need for power, control, and influence over your life. So being more willing to express and give and offer love to others and not really expecting it as much in return is a good thing because it'll keep you in the dependent uh, context, dependent situation, and that allowing others to have control over their life um, is the main means to safety, protection, and survival. So my ego energy based on survival emphasizes the need to be protected to survive and to experience safety. And for me to the best way, if I'm the dependent person, is to allow others to run my life, to submit, to uh, let them control or dominate and even manipulate me. Again, this sounds, it's a lot of craziness. It sounds like a lot of abnormal normal. It sounds like a lot of ego stupidity, but that becomes the nature of, of what's happening when people are living in a imbalanced ego energy, in this case, lower ego power. Ego's voice says you must also question the love that others may show you rather than receiving it. Love cannot be received by the undeserving and the unworthy. Receiving this love will move you beyond the safety and protection in which you reside. Here the dependent person is teaching themselves with the help of their lower ego power energy to ignore the love others sent to them 
because it can lead them to wanting more control or say in what is occurring in their life. That accepting love would elevate them to feeling they are deserving and worthy, but that this would remove the safety, the protection, and the survival of their dependency, which they must cling to. We have reached the end of our focus on ego's voice. I hope that you, this has given you greater insight as to the impact of lower ego power energy within the mind of the dependent person. We're coming up on our second break. When we return, we'll be looking at what the person living in the role of the dependent person is unable to hear from the voice of spirit due to the unhealthy, imbalanced ego energy that is at work. This is Dr. Nick. You're listening to It's Your Ego Stupid on Own Times Radio, and I'll see you after the break. The Real Conscious Connection, Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Ohm Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Ohm Times, co creating a more conscious lifestyle. Imagine yourself being transported to India, to the banks of the Ganga, and an ashram in Rishikesh. Visualize that you are welcome to satsang with an American sannyasi who shares the wisdom of her guru. Your visualization has manifested. Join Satvi Bhagawati Saraswati for inspiration and transformation every Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern on Om Times Radio. If I could be you, and you could be me for just one hour. If you could find a way to get inside each other's mind. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk, Walk a mile, mile in, in my, my shoes. shoes. We've all felt left out. And for some, that feeling lasts more than a moment. We can change that. Learn how at belongingbeginswithus.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Walk a mile in my shoes. Welcome back. You're listening to It's Your Ego Stupid on Own Times Radio, a show for intelligent, spiritual, and imperfect people, just like you and me. Now I'll be looking at what the voice of spirit is saying to the dependent person that they're unable to hear due to the blockage being caused by their lower ego power energy and the distance from their divinity that results from the thoughts and messages contained within ego's voice that I shared with you earlier. Along with coming to recognize ego's voice using ego medicine, the dependent person will need to hear the voice of spirit in order to fully heal and bring about the synergy, the merging, and the unification of their humanity and divinity. So now we'll take a look at spirit's voice. Spirit's voice says, your disempowerment has blinded you to the earthly and divine gifts that you've been given. You have replaced them with illusions of separation, unworthiness, and inequality, preventing you from truly knowing yourself, God, and the divine gifts that you have been given. You live in the ignorance of these truths, which are the making of your daily suffering. Here, Spirit is saying that the dependent person is unaware of how much they have been given to be empowered with in their life. That they're missing both the human strengths and uh, qualities that uh, come with being healthy in their humanity, as well as those that come within their divinity. And that they are weakening themselves with illusions in which they think of themselves as being disconnected or unequal and or less worthy of others and giving to themselves what life has to offer. They are living the suffering of being too dependent and submissive, 
submissive to others, which they don't need to be. So the suffering of, of being dominated, allowing themselves to be dominated or controlled or influenced in unhealthy ways is what spirit is speaking to. Spirit's voice says your suffering will end as you awaken to your truth, a truth that embraces who you are, what God is, and the divine gifts you have been given. You need not lean heavily upon others. All you need to empower yourself already exists within you. The presence of God and the love God is within your being have already infinitely empowered you. Here, Spirit is saying that the human suffering of dependency and submissiveness that often leads to additional suffering in the form of being exploited or manipulated and abused will end when the dependent person awakens to all of the gifts they have. The dependent person doesn't need others to empower them. The dependent person needs to empower themselves with what they have been given. Spirit's voice says, you have often revealed this empowerment to others in your thoughts, words, and deeds, but you have not seen it in yourself. It is within your slumber that you are suffering. As you awaken, you will learn that you are not weak, but strong, a strength that resides in being the love God is within your life. Here, Spirit is saying that the dependent person is missing many of the times when they have demonstrated their capabilities and potential to others. And I can recall many times people who are quite successful but have difficulty realizing that they have been successful, that they have done something well, when others can plainly see their strengths and their capabilities, but they have, in a way, learned not to see them for themselves. And that's the, 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 the powerful effect of uh, people who may be in one's life who have trained them in some ways to think less of themselves and think of being less capable. So whenever those capabilities or strengths or successes come forward, they don't see them because that prism, that ego energy prism, in this case, lower ego power, distorts the view. And that's what results in lots of ego stupidity and the abnormal normal where the person views themselves as less capable, less successful, often dumbing themselves down, getting caught up in thoughts and beliefs about themselves, which are faulty, that are distortions, that are out of touch with reality and truth. They are experiencing the uh, sense, the human suffering of failing to recognize their successes. And so that's a form of suffering, not being able to give yourselves an acknowledgement and an affirmation of one's ability uh, to be successful, often experienced by the dependent person. Uh, when we can't do that, now we again, don't often think of that as a kind of suffering, but it is because we carry that if we're the dependent person or many with lower ego power out into the world where we fail to recognize um, our successes and our strengths and that suffering. They are experiencing the human suffering of seeing themselves as weak when they are strong or stronger. That's suffering strength that can be known within their humanity and divinity. So there is both human strength, human strength that 
is revealed when our ego energy is healthy and in balance within its power, flexibility, and vulnerability. We begin to see ourselves in this accurate light and we see what we're capable of and also become aware of the strength of our divinity which exists within being the love, the life, and the energy that God is. Spirit's voice says, illusions of your separation, unworthiness, and inequality have come forth from your earthly disempowerment. There can be no true separation from God and your neighbor. God is always present within you and around you. You can never walk alone, even within your slumber. Here, Spirit is saying that the dependent person uh, reaching out to form a connection to others in God that already exists. We're already connected. We're not separated from others and from God. That a divine connection to God and all others already exists because God dwells within us. God's presence within us, the gift of God within, it's a part of us, even when we don't know it or realize it. And that the loneliness and the feeling of disconnection that the dependent person experiences is a creation or construction that's born of their disempowerment. It's just, it's just something that the dependent person has created, but isn't true. That is the uh, lack of connection, the lack of separation, the need to create a connection that already exists. Spirit's voice says you can never be less worthy or more worthy in God's kingdom. That idea is a false notion learned within the earthly realm and a reflection of your suffering. The divine gifts have been given to each and all. It is within the knowledge of these gifts that you can awaken to your worthiness and end your suffering. Here, Spirit is saying that dependent person has always been worthy and can never be unworthy. I think about how often we hear this notion that humans are not worthy, that they have to be made worthy. And here Spirit is saying, no, we are always worthy. We are the ones who create the illusion of of being unworthy and that illusion is rooted in our ego energy. The sense of one's unworthiness is an invention connected to the suffering of disempowerment. So being disempowered uh, in our lives, suffering or experiencing lower ego power energy creates this illusion, leads to this illusion that gets lived out, and particularly for those with the dependent uh, person role, living in that role, of being unworthy and seeing oneself as being that. And I think that, again, is something that may be acquired from parenting, from uh, dominating, overly protective influences that often create this sense of unworthiness within ourselves. That awakening to the gifts of em empowerment involving life, that you have the empowerment of life and you have the empowerment of creating one's life, your own life. Uh, you have the empowerment of eternal life and you have the empowerment of God within you and will allow you to know that you've always been worthy and have never been unworthy. In a way, you don't have to become worthy. You have always been worthy. The only thing which becomes is your awareness of it. Becoming aware of your worthiness is what is becoming. Spirit's voice says you cannot truly be unequal to others as God resides within you and all beings. There is no greater or lesser in God's kingdom. All beings are different but equal and one. This is the love, the life and the energy God is 
revealed. A revolution, a revelation that will end your suffering as you awaken to it. Here, Spirit is saying that the dependent person has never been unequal to others, just as I mentioned earlier, never having been unworthy. They've never been unequal due to God's presence within all of us. Within our divinity, we can be nothing but equal. The differences within our humanity do not remove the equality within our divinity. And I might add that the differences, I think, that uh, within our humanity um, often get pronounced when people are beginning to get caught up in the inhumanity that often uh, comes forth when ego energy issues of power, um, flexibility, and vulnerability start to occur, that those are the things that lead us into the inhumanity within our humanity that leads to people seeing themselves or others as less worthy or unequal or separated. But within our humanity and our divinity, there is equality. And I think when you talk to people or who are in a healthy place egoically within their power, flexibility, and vulnerability, they experience life. They experience themselves as equality, that all are equal, and they treat all as being equal. The love, the life and energy God is, makes inequality impossible and only an illusion. We have reached the end of our focus on e Spirit's voice for this show. I hope that what I've shared with will allow those needing to do so to hear the voices of ego and spirit that must be heard so that they can truly speak with more of their voice in their life and not egos and get on with the business of truly and authentically living and not just surviving or existing. I want to mention that you can purchase each of my books, Ego Therapy, Ego Spiritualism, The Two Voices Within, and It's Your Ego Stupid at the online bookstores for Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Balboa Press. You can also purchase Focused Ego Meditations on the shop page of my website, Ego and Spirit. Dot info, which can help you to know when you are truly speaking with your voice in your life and not egos as you go about healing your ego energy where needed in its power, flexibility, or vulnerability. If you would like to offer any comments, please email me at spiritualawakening777 at comcast.net but please do not leave any attachments as I cannot open them for security reasons. I end today's show with this message. The great news is that working to heal your ego energy using ego medicine by growing your awareness of its symptoms, ego stupidity, insights and spiritual impact will allow the divine truth in your being to flow and shine through you and allow you to fully embrace each of the divine gifts. The spiritual part of healing is a given. It's part of your endowment. Divine truth and the divine gifts are part of your heritage that already exists within you. You need do nothing more to be spiritual because you already are. You are a spiritual being having a human experience. You only need to enhance your humanity with ego medicine so that all which is available to you is given. Fix your ego to fix your life, humanly and spiritually. Thank you for listening and allowing me to be your servant. Please have a great week and do come back to my next program. In peace and love, this is Dr. Nick saying goodbye.
for now.